des techniques nouvelles, innovantes. La seule chose que la machine ne peut pas remplacer, c'est l'empathie du médecin vis-à-vis -vis de son malade. Artificial intelligence is a true revolution. Hello and welcome to this edition of France in Focus. I'm Delano D'Souza. On the show this week, we're focusing on France's use of artificial intelligence in the field of medicine. But first, what is artificial intelligence? It relates to how a machine or computer program mimics the human mind. Qualities such as the ability to understand language, solve problems, but most importantly, learn. So how does all this fit into the field of medicine? Well, to understand more, we've come to the Paris Descartes University and its Museum of Medicine. Follow me. This is where you can find one of Europe's oldest assortments of medical tools, a collection that dates back several centuries. It offers some perspective on the incredible progress brought about by each technological advancement. Today, it's AI's turn to lead the charge in scientific advancement, in particular as far as cancer treatment is concerned. At a nearby hospital, several startups are working on computer programs aimed at detecting malignant cells. Take a look. They're not doctors, but they too are leading the fight against breast cancer. Engineers at this Parisian startup are collecting images from hospitals from around the world. Here, all the engineers are working on data processing. Their goal is to collect all the data from available mammograms and teach the machine to automatically detect cancer. This startup specializes in artificial intelligence that studies millions of mammograms and can now pinpoint if there's a risk of cancer in new X rays. Here's a mammogram screening. A radiologist would typically examine this for any potential dangers. The algorithm works the same way. It will look over the image and stop as soon as it thinks there's a risky zone and flag it up with this yellow box. It helps the radiologist decide if they need to do more exams or not. Therapixel is just one of several startups that are hosted at Hospital Cochin's incubator. Paris Biotech Santé was created 20 years ago, and it's now the largest hub for medical startups in Europe. With over 5,000 square meters, thousands of jobs created, and millions of euros in funding to develop multiple projects. These innovations improve patient care, ultimately finding solutions for recovery faster than big companies. In France, we're lucky to have excellent engineering schools and medical schools. It means there can be a lot of synergy between scientists and it ends with fast results. Nikos Paragios is a polyvalent researcher. The mathematics professor founded an award-winning company less than two years ago. Terra Panacea uses artificial intelligence to develop contouring in radiation therapy. Here you see the patient's eyes, the two optic nerves, the lenses and the chiasms. This step's crucial at the beginning because you need to know where and how much you're going to dose the different parts of the eye. This technology helps doctors to be more precise when they are targeting tumours. Nikos Paragios calls it on-the-fly radiation. Patients usually have to undergo two to three months of radiotherapy. Their anatomy doesn't stay the same, they lose weight and their organs will swell. On-the-fly radiation means we can adjust the treatment according to your body that day, so we can reduce side effects and have a very precise treatment plan after five sessions. Doctors at Paris' Cochin Hospital routinely use these new technologies. With its algorithms, artificial intelligence is speeding up the fight against cancer. Now, the use of AI in medicine poses a number of ethical questions. And to discuss this, I've come to meet one of the people working on the issue. David Gousson is the founder of Ethic AI, an initiative that aims to develop a regulatory framework for artificial intelligence, and who's working on revising France's bioethics legislation. David Gousson, thank you very much for joining us here on the program. So is France a leader in artificial intelligence and for medicine? Actually, I wouldn't say so, because the European Union has true forces to develop uh, artificial intelligence uh, today, but the, it, you know, it's a global competition with a, a clear lead uh, for China or, uh, or the US. But here in France, we have strong forces 
in research. We have also uh, a key initiative which has been construed by the government and the, and the French president, and also new means of action such as the uh, you know, renewal investment program, which has a, a strong part dedicated to AI applied to healthcare. So does it need regulation? It actually needs regulation because the uh, ethical stakes are very, very strong. And we devised a, a body of soft, soft law regulation because if we uh, enact uh, opposable body of law in the first step, it will uh, re represent a strong hindrance to the development of artificial intelligence. Is the best way to deal with artificial intelligence to always have a, a medical professional present, like a surgeon? Actually, AI is not made to replace human beings. Not a surgeon or anything? No, you have very uh, effective, efficient robotized tools, but which are devised to help the surgeon rather than replacing him. But in, in, other, in other scope of activities, such as diagnosis in radiology, uh, the impact of AI could be stronger, but even in that field, it wouldn't replace the doctor. It will help him to reach uh, a, a more efficient and a more rapid uh, diagnosis. Now, with every program that involves data collection, questions of privacy become like top concerns. It's an actual concern, but we already implemented the GDPR in 2018. And what we have to do now is reaching another step. Is, and this step is dealing with also human resources issues to help answering the legitimate questions uh, raised by professionals. And that's what we do with the uh, SEKI initiative. We issued a report for the Mountain Institute, which uh, puts forward a methodology to uh, both construe and uh, tackle the issue of uh, HR impacts of AI in the healthcare system. Now, you said that there's still a lot of work for France to do in terms of artificial intelligence. Are there any medical fields that you're hoping France can make a breakthrough on? Actually, France ha has two assets on that field. Just one example, if you wish, the uh, startup TerraPixel, which uh, developed uh, a tool dedicated to the uh, mammography analysis, and it's one of the best in the world. So uh, let's be uh, strong on that field. Let's help uh, the, the creators and, res and the researchers. And the European framework is the appropriate framework to do so. So breast cancer. Yeah, breast cancer, yeah. David Cousson, thank you very much for joining us on the program today. Thank you indeed. Now, technology like robots is already assisting surgeons in operating theaters. Over in Strasbourg, scientists are working on groundbreaking programming that could be put in service in the next few years. Take a look. On the surface, this looks like a normal operation, but the difference is that the surgery is being filmed. On this screen, we can see a keyhole surgical operation being performed, and on the bottom screen is an operation taking place on the third floor, where we're experimenting with computer guidance. The aim is to develop artificial intelligence that in the future will be able to help surgeons with their work. For example, this young practitioner will be assisted by a computer set up with videos of hundreds of thousands of operations performed by experienced surgeons so that the technology will signal to the specialist if his actions conform with protocol or not. Professor Maris Score is one of the major supporters of this kind of image-guided surgery. For him, computers will one day be a surgeon's most trusted ally. There are certain minor complications, but that doesn't mean they're acceptable. For gallbladder removal, there's a 0.5% risk of complication. That's the equivalent of about four planes a day crashing at Heathrow Airport. And if you put it that way, it's unacceptable. There are about 40 members of staff at the Institute of Image Guided Surgery who handle numerous amounts of data. I take notes on operations. I have to choose the name of the instrument used and describe the action that it makes. In total, it takes me between 8 and 10 hours to write notes on a 30-minute operation. Even if it's realistic that a computer is capable of reaching the level of a doctor, its scope of action remains limited.
The only thing the machine can't replace is the empathy of a doctor towards his or her patient, and we know that that plays a huge part in the healing process. Recovery is not just about the medicine or the surgery, it's about also the message that you pass on to the patient before and after the operation. Researchers at the Institute also work on augmented reality technology like this, where a sonographer and a needle replace a scanner to operate on a cancerous tumour. This tool will optimize the positioning of the needle to ensure that the operation is safer and is performed faster. First of all, we look for the tumor, which will appear in white on the screen. We can mark that point in 3D, and then we'll be able to visualize the relative position between this three-dimensional point, which is the center of the tumor, the ultrasound image, and the virtual needle. The process is safer because it doesn't emit any X-rays. The technology is also cheaper and therefore more accessible. That's it for this edition of France in Focus. From all of us on the team, thank you very much for watching.